Hey guys, Professor Gooden here to talk about z-scores. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to calculate them using Excel. Hey guys, it's great to see your smiling faces today. I'm Dr. Jacob Gooden, Professor of Kinesiology at Point Loma Nazarene University. As I said in the intro, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to calculate z-scores from a set of raw data. Now, the data set that we are using is linked in the description below. It's a fictitious set of performance data from a set of athletes. So in this data set, you'll see some strength scores, some power scores, and some speed scores on a range of performance tests. So it's an isometric mid-thigh pull, a 30-meter sprint, and a vertical jump, a counter movement vertical jump. Now, if you stick around to the end of the video, not only will I show you two ways to convert raw scores into z-scores, but I will also show you how to compare those z-scores and interpret them as well. So go ahead and download that data set and then follow along with me. First, let's take a look at what we are dealing with. In column A, we have the athlete ID. It looks like we have 47 athletes in total. We have 30 meter sprint times, and these are in seconds. We see the units right here in the header. Then we have jump height, which is a measure of lower body power, and that's in centimeters. And then peak force in newtons, and this was measured by an isometric mid-thigh pull. Okay, so a fairly straightforward data set where we are measuring the speed and the power and the strength of this set of athletes. But the big question is how do we take scores from these different tests, which all use different units, right? Sprint time is in seconds, jump height is in centimeters, and the strength measurement is in newtons. How do we compare those scores? If athlete A has a really fast sprint time, but let's say they pull 4,000 newtons on the isometric mid-thigh pull, how does that compare to athlete B, who maybe has a so-so sprint time, but a really, really high, let's say 5,000 Newton pull on the isometric mid-thigh pull. In order to compare these different scores, we have to convert them from raw scores into a standard score. And the most commonly used standard score is going to be the z-score. So the first thing that we have to do is we need to create a new column, a few new columns. And let's insert, so I right-clicked and inserted Okay, so we're going to call this 30 meter sprint Z score. Okay, now I have my new column. So the first thing to do is to convert this into a Z score. So if you recall, the formula to convert a raw score into a Z score is the score minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So first we're going to take this standard deviation function right here and this mean function right here, and we're going to calculate those values. So the mean and standard deviation. So equals average, open parentheses. We're gonna grab this whole column. Now I'm gonna hit Command Shift up and then hold down the Shift key and push down one, and that's going to select that whole column enter and do the same thing with standard deviation. Now remember we want to use this sample standard deviation because we would hope to draw some inferences from this data to the larger population of athletes. All right, so there's the mean and standard deviation and we'll just click on this bottom right corner and drag it to the right. Okay, so now that is done. Now in this cell up here, what I need to do is reference each individual score as well as the mean and standard deviation. So I'll type equals the score in question. And then from that, I will subtract the mean. So there's the mean. So I'm gonna grab the mean and I'm going to lock it in place. On my Mac, I'm going to hit function F4 and that locks it. I believe on a PC, it's just F4. And you'll see these dollar signs in front of it. I'll close these in parentheses and then divide the whole thing by the standard deviation. And again, I will lock the standard deviation. So we keep 
this reference of the score unlocked so that it's a relative reference and it will move down as I fill this formula all the way down. So I'm just going to double click on this bottom right corner and boom, now I've got my z-scores. Now remember a set of z-scores will have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one because now this score is in the units of standard deviations from that raw data set. So if I have a z-score of one, it means I'm one standard deviation above the mean. If I have a z-score of negative 2.8, that means I'm 2.8 standard deviations below the mean. And this way we can compare scores not only within one data set, and we can evaluate each score based on its relative position to the rest of the data set, but we can compare other scores between uh, different measurements that have different units. So now let's go ahead and just copy this, Command C, and I'm going to copy this into Jump Height and into Peak Force. And the beautiful thing about this is that we've set it up so that this pulls my relative reference over, although it doesn't pull over the right mean and standard deviation. So what I could have done is I could have left this dollar sign off of that original formula, and then it would have pulled it over because it would unlock the column um, address of that cell, but I'm just going to do this and drag this over. So now it's referencing the right mean and standard deviation. We'll fill that down and do the same adjustment to this one and hit enter and pull this down. Just a quick note, I accidentally entered that formula in the third row instead of in the first, so this is just me fixing it really quick in triple time. Okay, now that we've calculated it quote unquote by hand, right, using the formula, we can actually also use a built-in function that Excel has called the standardized function. I'm going to insert three more rows. It's actually not that much of a time saver, uh, because it's it's about the same number of steps, but I'm going to show it to you anyways. So let's call this z-score 2. Okay, so we're going to use the standardize function equals standardize. I'm going to click on that, and it asks me for the score and the mean and the standard deviation. So what I can do, a couple ways to do this, we have to reference the score, of course. If we know the mean, we can hard code it in by just typing it in. So if I look down here, the mean is 4.51 about. So 4.51 and the standard deviation is 0.37. So 0.37. Okay, and hit enter. And, oops. Okay, what I, I uh, grabbed the wrong score. I need to move this over to here. There we go. So now it's now it's referencing the correct score of sprint time. And it's pretty close, but notice there's some discrepancy and that's from rounding error. So we look at 0.729 versus 0.728 or, or negative 0.728 rather. And so this is great. This option is great if you say only have a single score and you also know the mean and standard deviation already, but you don't have the whole array of data to work with. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that. And let's just do this. We can put the mean and standard deviation function. We can nest them inside of this standardized formula like that. And then comma standard deviation dot s. that and hit enter. Okay, and so now Excel is pulling the mean and the standard deviation from the raw scores. Now, the th only thing about this is that we would have to lock these into place so, so that when we drag it down, it doesn't, um, it doesn't start referencing a different array of data. So a third way to do it is I'm actually going to just reference the mean and standard deviation that I've already calculated down here and we'll lock it. So I'm just locking the row, comma, and I'll lock the row and hit enter, pull it down. 
Command-C to copy, Command-V to paste, and look at that, we've got our z-scores. Okay, so that was two different ways of calculating z-scores. The first was with the z-score formula to convert a raw score into a z-score. The second was using the standardized function in Excel. And, you know, I honestly like doing it without the standardized function a little bit better, just because it's the same number of steps, pretty much, and I think it's a little bit more intuitive. So now, with these z-scores, we'll use conditional formatting to color code them so we can easily evaluate the scores of different athletes from various tests of different units of measurement. So first, just to make this a little clearer, I'm going to delete these columns. <clears throat> so we only have this one set of z-scores. They were identical anyways. And let's just select all of them, and we'll conditional format them using color scales. And now we can see any number that is below zero is going to be red. Any number that's right around zero is going to be yellow. And any number that's above zero is going to be green. So the athletes who scored above average are going to be green. So for instance, this athlete, we can quickly pick out that athlete number 36 on the counter movement jump scored a huge number way above the average. And we can look over here to see the actual score was 61 centimeters. That 61 centimeters put this athlete likely at the top because it's the darkest green, green number. Now we see that that is almost three standard deviations above the mean. That is a huge jump as far as this data set is concerned. Now, this fictitious data, um, the counter movement jump was with no arm swing. So keep that in mind. It's not a huge jump compared to maybe what you see in the NFL combine, but with your hands on your hips, it surprisingly takes away 10 to 20% of your jump height. Now we can also take a look at, let's say, this athlete, number six. This athlete has a decent sprint time, okay? Almost one and a half standard deviations above the mean, but their jump height isn't the greatest and their strength is really poor. It's almost one and a half standard deviations below the mean. So if we were looking at this athlete, number six, and, and giving them some training advice, we might steer their program maybe a little bit away from sprint speed and in back into the weight room, give them some more squats, some more deadlifts, maybe work on that bilateral force and power production so that they can get their strength levels up and then improve their power to match the speed that they already have and to support that speed. And probably they would find that uh, those things being complementary, they might be able to sprint faster too, or at least with less uh, risk of injury. Okay, so that's how you can compare scores. You just remember that the z-score is the number of standard deviation units away from the mean. Zero is the mean in a set of z-scores, and if the sign is negative, it means they're below average. If the sign is positive, it means they're above average. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video on how to calculate z-scores using some sports science data. If you had any questions, let me know down in the comments and I'll see you guys on the next video.